Hey guys, so welcome to this first tutorial for this series. Throughout these next few tutorials, I'm going to show you how to make Space Invaders in Thunkable. Thunkable is a really awesome tool for developing cross-platform apps. It's block-based, so it's really easy to use. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to make a new project. I'm just going to call it Space Invaders tutorial because I've made a few of these at this point and I need to make sure I name this one uniquely. Um, I'm not going to bother doing that or that. We don't need the drag and drop interface for this because we're going to be using the canvas. So let's just hit create. So, okay. So now that we've got this set up, okay. So now that we've got this all ready to go, what we need to do is drop in three things into our display. The first one is our canvas, and that's what we're going to be using to control all the sprites and everything. That's where all the gameplay is going to happen. We're also going to put in a slider and a button. The slider is going to control where our player is on the screen from left to right, and the button is going to be our shoot button. So the easiest way to do this is to just search for what you want in the add components bin here, canvas. Drag that on. We need a slider. I'm going to try to pop that beneath it. And then we need a button. I might go there. Okay, cool. That's looking pretty good so far. I'm just going to adjust where I am on this screen here. So I'm not blocking anything important. Okay, cool. So what... I'm actually going to go full screen as well, just to make life easier. Okay, now what we're going to do as well, we're going to set up these while we're here. Now, I'm happy with my um, slider being 90% the width of the screen. I think that's probably a good idea. Um, what I would like is I'd like to make sure that my maximum minimum values are the width of the screen so that our player can move nice and seamlessly from the far left of the screen to the far right of the screen. So I'm going to have to do a couple things first to know that. I'm going to have to click on the canvas. At the moment, the canvas is filling the container, so that's good. Then I need to look at the stage. The stage is going to tell me the width of it. Now, you can change that width as much as you want. Uh, depending on what you really want this to go on. If I want this to be on a phone, I'm probably going to leave that where it is. If I want this to be played primarily on an iPad, then I'd probably work out a nice... Um, I'd probably work out a nice number to set that at. Okay. So, 300 is my width. That's good. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to set minimum value to 0, maximum to 300. And I want my slider um, circle to start in the middle. So I'm going to set that to be 150 to begin with. Now you can change the coloring of this, like the minimum track tint color and things like that. Um, I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. Feel free to go nuts. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that my button is set up nicely as well. So I'm going to make it stretch so that it goes all the way across the width of the screen. So width, instead of fit contents, I'm going to fill container. And I'm going to change the text on it to say fire. Or shoot, I'm going to go shoot. Cool. I'm going to leave the colouring as it is at the moment because I'm not sure what I want to how I want to color the rest of my game. So that's all good for the moment. Cool. I've got my track. I've got my shoot button. And I have my canvas. Now, if I click on stage one here, you can see that this is my canvas so far. It's got one little uh, beaver guy, thunkable beaver guy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the thunkable beaver guy be my alien. So I'm going to make whatever his sprite type is, they're going to be my aliens throughout this whole game. I'm going to need to make three sprite types, but first I think I need to explain what sprite types are. Sprite types are really fantastic. If you're familiar with a bit 
uh, more deep programming than just block based. Sprite types are basically like classes. So I can make one sprite type that is going to have, it's going to be able to generate many, many things that are the same. So I'm going to have many aliens on my scene, so I can just drag in a new sprite type, and it's going to have all the same default settings as this sprite type. So if we set that up properly, then the entire game will just work seamlessly. It'll be easy to do. We can create them in code really nicely and set it all up. At the moment, I'm just going to delete every sprite from there and just set up my sprite type. So I'm going to rename it to be called alien type. It's important that you still keep the word type there because it just helps you make a lot more sense of it, quite frankly. Um, I'm happy with the size of it at the moment. So the default size is 50 by 50. That's all good. What I need to, I know that I need to set these up now. So I'm just going to do it. So draggable is false. Good. We don't want to be able to let the player drag the aliens around. That seems weird. Um, should it pass through things? No, it shouldn't. So let's set that to false. Um, is static. So static means um, the opposite to dynamic. If you put it as dynamic, then it will be able to move with gravity and like forces when things hit it. Um, and that's where it is at the moment. I actually want this to be static. I'm going to move it not through physics. So I'm going to put that as static. So physics stuff doesn't affect it. Cool. Um, yes, it's ignoring gravity. Yes, it's a fixed rotation. So I can't just spin and move and weird stuff. Um, then there's these drawing settings, which are kind of fun, but not what we're doing today. Okay. So let's just make sure that you change it to is static and does not pass through. And then we need to add a couple more sprite types. So the next one I'm going to add is I'm going to add my player type. Now that I've added my second type, my player type, I need to add a sprite for it. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can either go onto Google and find a sprite that you'd like, but I've actually already done that. And I've got a little folder on my desktop called... Um, I don't remember what I called it. I called it Space Invader Sprites. There we go. I have my ship. Let's pop that in there. Sometimes it can be a little bit weird. You can see that being a little bit wonky there, but you can see it's right there. So it'll work itself out. Or if you want to work, make, force it to work itself out, you can just hit refresh. It'll usually start behaving. There we go. We've got our player type with our ship. And I'm going to need to add my laser type as well. Upload files. Laser. Let's get rid of your beaver there. Cool. Now, again, we're going to need to set up the actual settings for this. So I'm going to set passes through to be false, is static to be true, because we don't want physics to affect it, and we don't want it passing through other objects. Similar for the laser, there are a couple things we need to set up with the laser, though. And let's check the player as well. So the player is 50 by 50 by default, and that's actually pretty good. I'm happy with that. Just going to set it up down the bottom there. Uh, you can notice that that gets a little bit weird. It's one of those just... It's a very good tool, but there are a couple of oddities to it, so you just have to bear with it. Okay. This one, I don't want my laser to be 50 by 50. So I need to set it up to be the size that I want it, and then I need to make that the default. Now... That's a... I think I'm fairly happy with that size. So that is currently 30, nope, hold on. Yes, that is 36 by 15 pixels. So what I need to do is I need to go into my laser type and set that up so that it's always 36 by 15.
because whenever I add a laser onto my screen now, it's going to be that size instead of being 50 by 50. Great. Now I'm going to delete all those because I don't need any lasers on the game when it starts. I just need it to create the lasers when I press the shoot button. Okay. What I want to do now is I want to make sure I've got my player on my screen and I'm going to add a few aliens to my scene just for a bit of flavor. There we go. And if I hit live test now, it'll open up the tester for us. And we should see our ship and our aliens. Good. Good, good. Now, next thing we're going to have to do is to program it, but I think I'm going to do that in the next video. I am going to do one thing to try and flavor this up for us. And I'm going to set the stage one uh, background color to be black because we're in space. And let's see how that looks. Okay, that's not bad, but probably need to set the background color for the canvas or maybe just screen one. I think just screen one will do it. Oh, okay. So what you need to do there is so the stage itself is currently black, but we need to set the frame to be black. So let's do that quickly. So there we go. And then it would lie, we hit live test. And then, as you can see here, it is all now black. Currently, none of our programming works. But that's for another video. Sure. Thanks, folks. I will see you on the next one.